Right away, turn on your ujjayi breath. Listen to the whisper sound of your breathing in your throat. And start to track your breath into your physical body. You might at first feel the more obvious expansion of the belly, the ribs with the inhale breath. And start to feel as if you can move the breath elsewhere in the body. Start to scope out your shoulders, your hips. And if you notice any interesting sensations, start to direct your breath around them. Notice if the sensation has a temperature, a color, an emotional tone, even a sound. Check out a few different spots, or if you are working with an over injury or strong sensation, stay with it. Start to develop a relationship with the sensation. In our yoga practice, we very much avoid the effort of mind over matter. We don't tune out the things we don't want to feel or push through. We're trying to unite mind and matter. So starting right here with your breath, your physical body, your awareness, your emotions, all here together, creating the whole, informing how you will move into your physical practice. So we practice not despite our limitations. Our limitations are actually where the yoga happens, the growth, the transformation, like portals. Let's come into neck release. If you're not in a sitting position, come up to sitting. I'll offer a knee pile as a sitting position, stacking right knee on left, but any other seat for where your spine can be straight is perfectly good for neck release. If you're in knee pile, your top sides or tops of feet are headed, heading towards the mat. The knees are resting down. So that might help to raise your seat to rest the knees down. Active feet, if your position allows, are always a good idea spreading the toe and feet bones. Walk left hand out to the side enough that you can lean to the left, hang your head to left shoulder. Reach right fingertips to the floor toward on the right side. 
Right away, tuning into what you're feeling in right side neck. Send it breath. Exhale, soften the left side body. If left shoulder is climbing up towards ear, let it droop down. If you have to rest left forearm on something, that's fine. Sending all of your breath into whatever you're feeling in right side neck, and there might be a lot of different sensations, areas to explore. Start to hone in on something that responds to your breath. Maybe it's color shifts, it's sensation or mood shifts. Let your body communicate with it. Keep your neck all the way relaxed as you reach through your right hand to bring your spine back to straight, left hand to your face to help your head up, twisting to your right. If you're in knee pile, you can pick your right knee up for Ardha Matsyandrasana legs, right foot standing on the floor outside left knee. You could also choose to uncross the foot or straighten left leg out for spinal twist. Left hand or elbow to right knee. Inhale to get tall. Exhale. Press right hip down as you turn your belly into right thigh. And then notice where your neck is. You can choose to look over right shoulder. Or you can choose to keep the chin right over the center of the chest. Using your breath to feel for that continued unwinding through the whole spine, including the neck. Inhale. Exhale, back to center. Forward fold. Option to come back into knee pile or cross-legged seat. Forward fold at this point in practice might be simply releasing the head forward. I'm feeling how stretching the back of the neck stretches all the way down the spine. Some of you, your heavy heads will pull the whole spine forward. And reach your tail back down to the ground to anchor. Scope out sensations in the back of the body from base of neck all the way down into your pelvis. Use breath to create movement and life in those sensations. And keep your neck relaxed. Plug tail down, pull belly in. And maybe a hand puts your head back on top of your spine instead of your neck. Change the cross of your legs. Option knee pile left on right. Neck release. So sitting any other way works just fine. As you walk right hand out to the right, lean head to right shoulder. Left arm reaches away from your head. You're welcome to play with the height, the angle of left arm and or angle of your chin till you find just the right spot in this side of neck. Just keep the heart lifted, the head in line with your shoulders. And three luscious breaths. Your breath like palpating, massaging fingers, scoping out the sensations in left side neck and shoulder. You can make sound as you exhale, help to vibrate the sensations. Neck stays released. Use hands, use abdominals to bring your spine up. Bring right hand to face to help head up. Spinal twist to the left. Pick your left knee up. 
Adjust the way you're sitting as much as you like, and then twist into the left thigh, both sitting bones planted on the earth. Inhale to lengthen the rest of the spine off your rooted tail. Exhale, continue to lengthen as you spiral to the left, leading from the low spine. Maybe the head follows, maybe the head stays centered. last two breaths all the way down as low as you can feel even low low bellies constricted bring breath into it exhale rewind come into your forward fold knee pile or cross-legged seat half knee pile works fine too And wherever you stop your fold, wherever you find sensation, use your exhales to let your head get heavier and heavier. Be curious about what sensations that causes in the hips or in the back or in your own mind. Next stays released as you come back up and all the way down onto your back for abdominals. But before you lower down, I'll show you. We'll do elbow to knee with thigh traction two rounds and then brolga, which I think a few of you, maybe all of you have done with me before, but just as a refresher, you can watch. Elbow to knee will set up as we usually do, knees over pelvis, hands cradling head and neck off the earth. We'll exhale elbows to one thigh, say left thigh, right leg straightens. For the thigh traction, right hand will come to your right thigh. And as you breathe out, you'll use your right hand to traction the thigh bone off the pelvis. Pull your belly down. Pelvis stays on the ground. This is just to make a little space in joint. So we'll do a couple of those to each side. And then brolga. Brolga is like a stork, like a water bird. So we'll start exactly the same, twisting to the left, right leg straight. Right hand will come to left ankle and put your left foot on your right inner thigh like you're doing tree pose upside down. Some of you will get your foot to stick to your pants. Some of you will have to hold your foot in place with your right hand. If your foot sticks, then you can hold head and neck again. Then instead of using your hand to traction thigh up, you use left foot to draw right thigh bone up, pull belly down. Look fun? All right, let's try it. Come on to your back. Line your knees up over your hips. Feet can dangle down by your buttocks, but spread the toes, put energy through the toe bones. Cradle your head and neck. Massage your neck for a moment with your thumbs. I want you to feel for the relaxation you already created there and keep it. Point elbows to sky, keep the neck relaxed as you lift head and shoulders off the mat. Take a breath down into low back. Exhale, point both elbows to left thigh, straighten right leg to the ceiling. Right hand comes to right thigh. Now, if your neck wants both hands to stay on your head, just imagine holding right thigh. And then exhale, draw your right thigh bone up. Turn the knee slightly in towards the left. Left knee has not moved. Pull your belly down. Inhale, back to center. Bend both knees. Keep your head and shoulders off the mat. Exhale, elbows to right thigh, left leg straight. Left hand takes hold of left thigh. Exhale, draw the thigh bone up, a little spiral in towards center, pull your belly down, press left side waist down. Inhale, center, bend your knees, hand support head and neck. Exhale, twist left, right leg straight. Right hand takes hold of right thigh. Exhale, draw thigh bone up, pull belly down, pull right side waist down. Inhale, center, one more side like that. Exhale, twist right, left leg straight. Press the low back flat. Left hand to thigh. Exhale, draw your thigh bone up. Pull left side low belly down. Inhale, center, moving into Bralga. Exhale, press low back flat, elbows left, right leg straight. Right hand reaches over for left ankle so you can put it on your right inner thigh. Either hold it in place 
or if you can get it to stick, hands can support head and neck. And then exhale, use your foot to traction right thigh up, pull your belly down, keep your shoulders off mat. One more side. Inhale, come back to center, massage your neck with your thumbs. Press your low back flat, squeeze sitting bones to tail. Exhale, twist right, left leg straight. Left hand reaches for right ankle, so you can put foot on inner thigh. Feet are still active. Press foot into thigh, thigh into foot, and exhale, draw your thigh bone up. Pull your belly down. Inhale, head down, feet down. If Supta Baddha Konasana, resting butterfly, is okay for your hips and knees, drop your knees open. If there's a better way to rest, find it, then put your hands on your hips and direct your breath into your low belly. Hips and hip flexors. Bridge. Pick your knees up, plant your feet on the floor, hips width apart, arms down alongside your body. Let's start with the palms turned open so the shoulders are falling back to the mat, the collarbones are wide. Take your breath all the way up into the collarbone area. Exhale, press your feet down, curl your tailbone up, and press your hips into bridge. You can keep arms where they are or bring arms up alongside your ears. Feel for the knees reaching towards front of mat in other direction, tail pointing towards knees, lengthening pelvis away from low back, breathing the rib cage off the low back in the other direction. Exhale, slowly lower down. Figure four, flex your right foot, hook it over your left knee. And you can choose to keep left foot on the floor and use right hand to massage thigh open or hug left knee in towards chest. Threading right hand between in that triangle between your right leg and the left leg to reach for thigh or shin. Figure four, spinal twist. Keep your legs as they are. Open your arms to a T. Drop your knees over to the left side. So your right foot ends up standing on the floor with your knee pointing up to the ceiling. Left hand comes to right inner thigh and continue to massage your right thigh bone forward, knee forward. Right arm might reach up on the diagonal to the right opposite direction. And then we'll either move into twisted root spinal twist on this side or simply stack the knees. Some of you will tuck your right foot behind your left knee, spinal twist. Or if that twisted root is no good for your hips, knees stacked, or maybe there's a pillow or blanket between your thighs or underneath left knee. Some schools of yoga say you keep right shoulder on the floor. I'm not concerned whether the shoulder stays down or up as long as it feels beneficial to your shoulder. There can be a little sweet shoulder stretch there when the shoulder pops up if it doesn't hurt. All right, pick your right knee up to come back to center, figure four, left ankle over right. Direct a slow inhale breath down into left hip. And continue to follow your breath. Let that move you into deepening expressions of this shape. Or deepening experience. The external expression does not have to change but your experience might as you slow and deepen the breath around the sensations. Spinal twist, open your arms to a T. Knees, legs fall over to the right side, so left foot's on the floor. If it's pulling way too much, you just move your legs away from you a little bit down the mat. If you want more, 
Right knee presses your left foot closer to your body. Right hand presses knee away. Left arm might reach in the opposite direction. And spinal twist, either stack your knees or sneak that left foot underneath the right knee for a twisted root variation. You might need to untwist your root to crawl to all fours. Maybe keep rolling onto right side and crawl with a relaxed neck. Go right into cats and cows once you're in your tabletop. Turn up the ujjayi sound. And once you've got a sense of the breath creating that spinal flexion and extension, lower your elbows down to the mat. Continue your cat stack cows on your elbows. Hands can be clasped in front of you if that feels safer. If those of you can't be on hands, elbows at all are welcome to sit in any position and cat cow your spine with no weight on the arms. Stay with the breath rhythm you created. I'm going to give a few different options for directions. Either stay with cats, cows on your elbows to continue to massage open the upper back, or pause the movement in your cat stretch with your head hanging, lifting the upper back, sending breath into it, dolphin prep, lean your hips back. Or full dolphin, tucking your toes, lifting your knees off the mat. Focus is still on running your breath up and down your spine, whether you're choosing to move or not move. Whether you're choosing a resting position or an active position. Relax your neck. If you're in full dolphin, lower your knees down. Find your way into downward dog. We're transitioning towards standing, so if you're skipping down dogs, slowly find your way to standing. Keep your breath going. Down dog, step or jump forward. Breathe in with your heart forward, your tail back. Breathe out, fold into your legs. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, samastitihi. Slow classical sun. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Left leg back, knee down lunge. Lower your knee, untuck your toes. Drop your tail down, lift your heart up, maybe lift your arms up. Breathe right up to the fingertips or up into the collarbones. Exhale, hands down. Plank, inhale. Exhale, lower down to your belly. Cobra or low cobra, inhale, pull your heart forward. Your hands can be forward of shoulders or by your shoulders. Hips stay down for cobras. Now pull your heart forward, your rib cage out of your low back in all variations. Exhale, downward dog. Or rest here and meet us in lunge, left foot forward. Lunge, maybe you lower your knees down and then step left foot forward. Inhale, lift heart, maybe arms. Exhale, forward fold. Hands down, step right foot forward to left. Fold into your legs. Inhale, rise to stand. 
Exhale, hands to heart. Other direction. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg back, knee down lunge. Inhale, lift heart, maybe arms. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, plank or find another way onto your belly. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Right foot forward, knee down lunge. You can lower your knees first if you prefer. Inhale the arms up or just lift heart. Exhale, forward fold, left foot steps up to right. Relax your neck. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Bird's wing, relax your arms. Turn your palms up, bend your elbows, squeeze your elbows into your front ribs. As you breathe into your upper back, bring the pinky fingers in towards each other. And as you breathe out, squeeze, or rotate your thumbs out and squeeze elbows into ribs. Again, inhale, rotate the arm bones in, fill the upper back with breath. Exhale, rotate the arms out, just as far as they can go without letting the ribs come off, the elbows come off the ribs. Again, like that, inhale and exhale. One more breath. Relax your arms. Surya Namaskar B, standing at Utkatasana, uh, standing in Tadasana in front of Matt. Utkatasana, inhale, sit back into your chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Now here comes a whole series with chaturangas and vinyasas. I think you guys all know you can modify at any point. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Choose your cats and cows instead or your half sons. Exhale, downward dog. Warrior one, step right foot forward, ground your feet and then inhale the heart up, the arms up. Exhale, chaturanga or your modified vinyasa. <clears throat> Excuse me. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot forward, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Adding on, right foot forward, warrior one. Eagle warrior, right elbow crosses under left. Optional, hands can rest on the shoulders or continue to thread your arms through to cross at the wrists. Gaze any direction that continues your unwinding neck work. So if that means looking down, relaxing your jaw so much that you start to drool, that's amazing. If you prefer to keep the neck straight, just keep the chin slightly retracted. If you want to look up, keep the chin retracted and then look up. Exhale, unwind your arms. Interlace hands behind back. Or if the interlace doesn't work for you, maybe you hold your strap and pull on it to squeeze shoulders together. Stay upright or choose ostrich. Exhale, fold. Inhale. 
Even if your hands are lifting up high, reach through your knuckles to pull shoulders out of ears. If you feel safe coming up bound, reach through your knuckles, push with your feet, inhale. One round of that eagle ostrich flow. Exhale, eagle, right under left. Inhale, lift heart, maybe elbows. Exhale, interlace hands behind back. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Twisting warrior variation. Lower your hands to your hips, then all the way to the ground. Stay on left hand, come onto back toes, right arm to thigh or to sky. Wide angled forward fold, right hand comes down to left. Walk your hands to the left. Turn your toes in, your heels out. So you're facing side of mat with feet parallel or a little pigeon toed. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. You stay folded. I'm just going to turn around on my mat if you're looking at me. Inhale, half lift to a flat back. Right hand on the ground, fingertips on the ground or fist. Right underneath your chest, left hand to hip or to sky. Lunge. Left hand down, walk your hands towards right foot. Lower your left knee down. Inhale, lift heart, maybe arms. Exhale, your vinyasa. Full breaths in and out. Warrior one, left foot forward. Eagle warrior, left elbow under right. Inhale, lift heart, maybe elbows. Stay for a couple of breaths this first round. Option to relax your head forward or back. Or keep your gaze steady. Exhale, unwind your arms. Interlace hands behind back. If you're doing the variation with the strap and you want to skip the next round where we do flow, feel free to hold and just do extra breaths in any of these shapes. Exhale, ostrich if you're choosing to bow. Reach through your knuckles to pull you up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, eagle, left under right. Inhale, lift heart, maybe arms. Exhale, interlace hands behind back. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Twisting warrior variation. Lower hands to the ground. Right hand to the ground. Spin onto right toes, twist to your left. Now feel the squeeze between pelvic floor and belly button. That's contracting and spinning into the left thigh. Everything else can extend away from that. The left inner knee reaches forward. The right inner ankle reaches back. Your heart breathes forward. Your left wing lifts you up. Wide angled forward fold. Left hand down to right. Walk your hands to the right. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Left fingertips down to mat. 
Right hand to hip or to sky. Lunge to left foot. Lower back knee. Inhale, lift heart, maybe arms. Exhale, your vinyasa. Now that sequence we just did, we're going to repeat it two, maybe three times, probably two times as vinyasa, moving with the breath. If you prefer to go slower and hold any of those poses, please be my guest. The vinyasa part is the breath. Warrior one, right foot forward. Eagle warrior, exhale, right elbow under left. Inhale, lift heart, maybe elbows. Exhale, interlace hands. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Warrior one, inhale, rise. Exhale, eagle, right under left. Inhale. Exhale, interlace hands. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Release hands to earth, twisting warrior variation. Left hand down, come on to left toes. Inhale, right arm to sky. Wide angled forward fold. Exhale, right hand down to left, walk hands left. Turn your toes in, your heels out and fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to flat back, right fingertips under chest. Twist left. Take a breath. Lunge to right foot. Back knee down. Inhale. Exhale, your vinyasa. Breathe in. Breathe out. Left foot forward, warrior one. Eagle, left under right, exhale. Lift your heart, inhale. Exhale, clasp hands behind back. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Inhale, warrior one. Push with your feet. Exhale, eagle, left under right. Inhale. Exhale, interlace. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Twisting warrior, release your hands to the ground. Come on to back toes. Left arm to sky. Breathe into it. Wide angled forward fold. Exhale, walk your hands right, turn left toes in. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back, left fingertips on ground. Exhale, twist right. Take a breath. Lunge to left foot. Exhale, walk back to back of front of mat. Breathe in. Exhale, your vinyasa. Vinyasa can include stepping forward into forward fold. Skipping the arm balances. Or inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right foot, warrior one. Inhale. Eagle, under left. Exhale. Take a breath. Exhale, interlace hands behind back. Inhale, lift heart. Exhale, ostrich. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, eagle, right under left. Inhale. Exhale, interlace. Inhale. 
exhale, ostrich. Release your hands to the floor. Twisting warrior. Right arm to sky, inhale. Wide angled forward fold. Exhale, right hand down. Turn your right toes in. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Right fingertips stay on the ground under chest. Exhale, left arm up, twist. Take a breath. Exhale, lunge to right foot. Inhale. Exhale, your vinyasa. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more side. Left foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, eagle, left under right. Inhale. Exhale, interlace. Inhale. Exhale, ostrich. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, left under right. Breathe in. Exhale, interlace. Breathe in. Exhale, ostrich. Lower your hands to the ground. Twisting warrior. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, wide angled forward fold. Walk hands right. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Left fingertips stay on earth. Exhale, right arm up. Or to hip, take a breath. Exhale, lunge. Towards left foot, right knee comes down. Breathe in. Exhale, your vinyasa. Down dog, hip opener, right leg to sky. If you're not in down dog, pause and breathe. And you'll meet us in a lunge with right foot forward. Hip openers, reaching right knee up, right foot dangling down to buttocks, press into right hand, keep your shoulders squared. Step your right foot to the outside of right hand for a wide stride lunge. Then lower back knee down. Some of you will lower elbows down. Finding a big cushion, a bolster, or blocks to put your elbows on. It's a good way to compromise. Let your elbow shoulders rest as your hips get heavier and heavier. And fuller and fuller of breath. And if this is right for you, tucking back toes under, inhaling left, lift left knee off mat, straighten back leg. Pyramid, walk yourself back up to your hands if you're on your elbows. Bring right foot to center, left foot forward a little bit. So it's about two and a half, three feet behind the right. Possibly like triangle where your feet are in one line, but square your hips to front of mat, belly over right leg. If you need to move left foot over to the side a lot to take any pull off the low back, please do. If you need to come out of the pose and find your blocks, there's no hurry. We'll be here for a few more breaths. I'll offer a little undulation with the breath. Inhaling, heart forward, shoulders back. Exhale, relax your neck. Two more breaths like that. Inhaling, belly to knee, heart past toes. Exhale, soften. 
Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. Moving into Triangle Uttita Trikonasana, inhale to a flat back. If your feet are not already in triangle footprint, move your left heel or left foot in line with the right heel. Bring right hand to shin or set it on a block if you want to keep pressure off the knee. Left hand to hip. Press your right big toe forward as you tuck your right buttock underneath you. Use your left hand to open the left hip shoulder. Once everything's in line, maybe left arm reaches directly across from the right. Tailbone moving back, heart telescoping forward. Gaze wherever neck is comfortable. Warrior two. Some of you will need to put hands on hips and then bend the right knee to come into warrior two. That's fine. Reverse warrior. Exhale, right arm up. Left arm sliding down leg. Some of you like back traction, pressing into left hip or wrapping it behind back. That's fine too. Slow your breath all the way down into your right hip. And see if there's a different arm position that can accentuate the involving sensation you're experiencing there. Twisting lunge. Bring hands down to either side of right foot. Lower the back knee down. Left elbow over right thigh. Any arm variation, if you'd like to try prep for bind arms, maybe left hand comes to right hip and right hand comes over to left hip behind you. Prep for bind if you're curious because eventually your armpit will come across so you can reach underneath your right thigh and then left hand, right hand finds the left. But holding your own hips and spiraling out of that, same thing. Lunge, hands down to either side of front foot. Maybe move the left knee back into a deeper lunge if it's not already. Inhale, lift heart, you can keep hands down or arms up. Or Shiva arms, turn your palms out. Cross right behind left, press your palms together as you spiral the arms straightening up. Drag shoulders tail down, breathe your rib cage up. Your vinyasa. If you're in down dog, down dog hip opener, left leg to the sky. If your hips open up a lot, then you start to engage tailbone pressing against that, tucking tail in. Lizard lunge, deep lunge, hip opener. Step your left foot to the outside of left hand. Lower back knee down. You can choose to stay up on hands, locking elbows out as your hips get heavy. Or if your arms start to get tired, rest them on something. If you do have a bolster or cushiony type prop, you can always put that underneath your chest or head so the whole upper body can relax and you can focus on what's happening in the pelvis as you send breath there.
pyramid, Parshvatanasana. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to straighten back a leg if you'd like to add a few breaths in that variation of lizard. Pause. And lift your hips up as you tuck your tail to help you into that transition into pyramid. Left foot moves towards center. Right foot somewhere behind left foot, toes angled out, but the hips squared off to the left. As you inhale your heart forward, shift weight onto left foot. Maybe so much weight you feel the right foot, right heel start to rise. And then press the right heel back down as you relax your neck. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, soften. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Uchita Trikonasana, triangle. Inhale to flat back. If your feet are not already in triangle, put them there. And bring right hand to hip, left hand to shin, ankle, or block, or thigh. Works just fine as you draw your heart, left side heart forward, left hip underneath you. Peel right hip, shoulder open. And then maybe your arms open up. Warrior two, inhale. Reverse warrior. Exhale, left arm up. Tuck your left sitting bone straight down. Press your left knee open. Twisting lunge. Bring your hands down to either side of left foot. Lower back knee down. Right elbow hooks over left thigh. Option, right hand to left hip, left hand around to the right hip. Supporting your own pelvis so you can lengthen your spine out of it. Lunge, hands down, tail down, lift your heart, maybe your arms. If you want to do Shiva arms on this side, palms open, cross left behind right, then press the palms together, and spiral the arms, heart up, the shoulders and tail down. Exhale, your vinyasa. Revolved triangle. Step your right foot forward for pyramid. You might want your block with you if you're using a block today. Setting up your pyramid, that squared off triangle footprint. Then inhale your heart forward, spine parallel to the earth, belly in, right sitting bone back. In fact, take your right hand to your hip and draw your right hip bone back. Left hand can be on block. It can be on shin. Or it can be on the ground. Some of you have been practicing. Maybe you put your left hand to the outside of your right foot. And then spiral to your right. Yes, right arm can open once your shoulders are lined up. Arms put a lot of weight on neck and low back, so raising the arm puts undue pressure in neck, hips, or any part of your spine. Keep hand on hip. Head to ankle prep. Lower your right hand down. Bend your right knee. Step your left foot back into a warrior two-leg footprint. And then keep the legs like that, the right knee bent, 
as you walk your hands to the left and plant your left hand on the ground somewhere between your feet or plant it on a block. Right hand takes hold of the right inner thigh bone. I'm just turning around on my mat. I hope that didn't confuse you. Press your right thigh open. Inhale. Arc your chest away from that like you're trying to look over the left ankle. But then exhale, relax your neck. Close your eyes. Everything you need to see is in your right hip, right low back. Send your breath there. Head to ankle variations. Release your right hand. Walk your hands to the inner right foot and lower left knee down. Move your right foot over to the edge of your mat so both hands can be there. And if you haven't done head to ankle before, you can watch. I'll show stages and then I'll talk you through the stages nice and slow so you don't have to memorize, you have to breathe so your body learns it, your head doesn't have to learn it. All right, so stage one, maybe you just hang out here in kind of a deep lunge hip opener, but your back knee is almost under your pelvis. You're not in a deep lunge. Some of you will lower down onto left elbow, hold your right ankle. Right hand comes behind the right foot so it can hold onto your ankle from the other side. And then relax your neck, head to ankle. This can be very passive and there's still a lot of things to get upset about in here. Or maybe you turn it on a bit, you breathe into left ribs, and as you breathe out, you pull on your ankle, trying to get your head to your ankle. And if you're close, but you just need a little more room, maybe straighten back leg, hips stay high. If you bend the right knee, you don't have a lot of room to move under. But if your hips are high, you breathe in and you exhale, start to crawl underneath yourself. All right, so if you're not twisted up yet, start in stage one, left knee down, both hands to the inside or elbows on blocks. Right knee knocking into shoulder. Maybe that's enough. Maybe you come down onto left elbow and take hold of right ankle. And you bring right hand behind the heel so you can hold on to left hand and ankle. And you relax your neck. I'm going to watch so I can keep cueing from there. Okay. And if you want to stay passive, you do. If you want to start pulling on your ankle, you pull on the exhale breath. You balloon the left ribs, the opposite ribs open with your inhale breath and exhale, relax your neck or tuck your chin. If you want to straighten back leg, just make sure your butt is still moving up, right leg almost straightening. Take two more breaths wherever you are. If you're still in striving and fidgeting, pause and breathe. All right, crawl on out from underneath yourself and come into pigeon. Any variation of pigeon, Actually, we'll go right into sleepy pigeon towards the foot. So once you're in your pigeon, lower all the way onto the right hip. Left knee bends out to the side. And bring your right foot forward. So shin is at least parallel to front of mat, maybe even more than that, more open. So I'll show you the sleepy variation. You might want a block or cushion nearby. Right arm can possibly thread to the inside of right leg. Shoulder inside knee. And then I like to use a block as a pillow. But you can arrange it so that your own arm or leg is pillow. Left arm, wherever helps you get sleepy. So that's the most down-regulating variation. Some of you feel like you're just getting some juice, some energy in right hip and want to keep exploring that more actively. You can hold on to right foot and inhale, draw yourself towards it, and or hook elbow or right upper arm into sole of right foot. Make a fist with right hand, and then push off with left hand to twist open to the ceiling. And once you set up the upper body shape, some of you might be able to extend left leg back and turn the thigh under like full pigeon. If that accentuates things, cool. If it distracts, don't do it. And I can't tell anyone's struggling, but if you can't be in a belly down variation and want to be in pigeon on your back or any of our opening twists, hopefully that's where you are now. I'll give you three breaths in silence to really explore what your experience is right now. Open to all of it.
And find your way into your neutral shape, whether that means downward dog or taking a vinyasa. You may have noticed when you open to your experience, you start to make space, you move away from that like or dislike. It doesn't matter because everything changes. You can just start to be with what is moment by moment. All right, setting up side number two, revolve triangle with your left foot forward. Turn this way. Pyramid footprint, left toes forward, right toes angled out, hips squared over left leg. Inhale to a long spine, crown of head reaching forward, tailbone back. And for some of us, this is enough here. This is already technically a twisted shape. Left hand can come to hip to keep pulling it back. Right hand, ground, block, or leg. And you can keep spiraling your spine to the left. And maybe open left arm away from right. No. And as always, I'm not concerned whether you choose to look up, down, or hang your head. If you want to get real grounded, you close your eyes and let yourself wobble. Head to ankle prep, lower the left hand down, bend your left knee, open the right foot back into warrior two, and with your left knee bent, walk your hands towards right foot, put your weight on the right hand, maybe it's on a block, left hand starts pressing your left thigh bone open. Inhale, telescope the low ribs away from the hips, the middle ribs away from low ribs, and the heart off the rib cage. Exhale, relax your neck. Head to ankle. Release your hands. Walk them back towards the left foot and lower the right knee down. Practically right underneath your pelvis. Tail is pretty high. Move left foot aside so both hands can be to the inside of left foot. And again, some of you, this is your head to ankle right here. Some of you, lower onto right elbow and hold onto your left ankle. Then left hand, you have to get your shoulder behind your left knee so you can hold the other side of your ankle. Hang your head or look at your navel. And then you choose whether you're just relaxing and breathing here. Relaxing is an obnoxious word, I'm sorry, but <laughs> being and breathing here. Or if you're starting to draw your head closer and closer to your ankle with your exhales. If you need more space to crawl underneath yourself, for some, it makes it easier to straighten back leg. For some, that's harder. If you stay with it breath by breath, easier, harder, doesn't really make a difference. Every breath, whatever shape you're in, is a full experience. Sleepy or twisting pigeon towards the foot, crawl on back out from underneath yourself. Lower your left shin down and then roll right onto left hip. Sit on your butt. Right knee bent out to the side. Now be careful, that TFL right there. She's a tight lady on, or tight guy on most of us. So bringing your right knee forward can cause it to cramp up. So just be, keep it soft as you open left foot forward. Either snuggle. If you can't quite fit behind your leg, you put your left arm on your leg. Or you get a cushion or something, you can just get a hangout on. And do try to relax into the shape. The letting go of the binding of the muscles is key to the more relaxed variation. If you're choosing the more active variation, left elbow or hands to left foot. If you're using elbow, maybe actively twisting your chest open. Maybe turning your right thigh under. TFL people, I would 
try to straighten right leg without turning thigh under. That might be more of a stretch. It's a tough muscle to isolate. And by TFL people, but probably mean all of us. All right. Coming into neutral, we'll come to sitting. If you'd like to take a vinyasa before you come onto your seat, go ahead. Baddha Konasana ABC. Coming into a Baddha Konasana with your feet together, your knees open, feet as close to pelvis as feel safe and comfortable for you. It is still okay to sit up on something. Conscious foot variation, so either choose to keep the feet pressed together, the soles of the feet pressed and the toes open. I offer that, we do that in force yoga to help stabilize and protect the knee. Doesn't let the knees open as much, but that's okay because it stretches your hip instead of your knees. Classical yoga say, turn the feet open, which will drop the knee. If you have knee issues, be very mindful of that. A, once you've chosen your foot position, hold your ankle, sit up as tall as you can, tuck your tail down, scoop your low belly up, lift your heart, squeeze shoulders back, then tuck your chin down to notch between collarbones, keep the chin tucked in, eyes gazing at tip of nose, strong ujjayi breaths, so you can get longer and longer through your spine. And lift your chin, relax all those pressure points. And I'll talk through formal Baddha Konasana B and C, but if you just want to relax into any Baddha Konasana forward fold and tune me out, please do. Baddha Konasana B, formally, holding your ankles, squeezing your elbows back, keeping your heart lifted, chin lifted, leading forward straight spine like you're trying to bring your chin to the ground and your elbow straight back. For some of us, we've been trying to undo this tension in our neck, then don't do that. Relax your neck. If you are in the straight spine version, take one more breath to get longer from heart through tail. And keep your spine straight. Tuck your tail to pull you back up. Ashtanga Baddha Konasana C. Inhale, get tall. Then tuck your tail, tuck your chin, and round crown of head toward your feet, turning into a tight little ball. If you get burning along your spine, please don't compress that much. Big breaths into the back of the body, belly pulling in a lot. Round your way back up. Come onto your back. We'll head towards relaxation because it's time. I could play with you guys all day, but we'll meet again next week. As you head into rest, perhaps your body's asking for a final spinal twist or a moment upside down. You are welcome to use this time to play. Stay with your slowing, softening conscious breath as you settle towards a relaxation. So you can truly listen to any cues from your body. Our minds are full of agenda. They will never stop if we listen to the mind. But if you listen to your body, it might be telling you to let go. Sense of completeness, completeness. Settle into that.
Start to deepen your breath. course, in your own home, you may choose to continue to rest, then let it go again. If you're ready to transition towards seating, start with small movements. Start down at fingers and toes. And grow it into the ankles and the wrists. And maybe take a full body stretch with your arms up and yawn to open your mouth as wide as it'll go. And curl up onto your left side or your less injured side. It's an easier way up to sitting. As the sitting, we'll meet with our palms pressed together, thumbs press into sternum to lift your heart. Bow your head to your own heart. Feel it beat. Feel your seat on the earth. Cultivate a sense of gratitude for this vessel. We express our gratitude for each other saying namaste.